resolved further that said agreement and plan of merger shall be submitted to a vote of the voting members of the LCA at a duly called and held regular or special meeting. Valid ballots, 557. Invalid ballots, none. A two-thirds majority is required, 372. Yes, 538. No, 19. There is, at least on the part of the LCA, no possible further obstacle to the formation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. At our final uh, board meeting, we worked at uh, establishing a budget uh, that would take us from now until January 1, uh, 1988. We made provisions for uh, staffing uh, that would help us to uh, close down uh, the AELC with uh, some, uh, some degree of, of order. And finally, we committed ourselves to uh, pressing for uh, the culmination of our share of the fund appeal so that we can uh, come into the ELCA uh, with our uh, full tilt of uh, financial contributions as well as our contributions of certain human resources to the church. We, in congregations, synods, and church-wide gatherings, will determine the character and depth of the ELCA. It is God who has called us, gathered us, enlightened us, and prepared us for this day. Before that final glorious day of God's own preparation in the kingdom to come, God has equipped us to write a glorious chapter in Christian life and ministry on this planet. On to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Come share the Spirit, Christ has called us To untold ventures in a life of faith Hello, I'm Edgar Trexler, editor of The Lutheran, your new church magazine. We're in Columbus, Ohio for the constituting convention of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. It's fitting and appropriate that we should be here for this convention and for the closing conventions of the predecessor churches, the Lutheran Church in America, the American Lutheran Church, and the Association of Evangelical Lutheran Churches. Columbus and Ohio have long been strongholds for Lutheran tradition and history, particularly for the strength of the congregations and for the educational institutions. The sessions for the ELCA convention will be held in the Ohio Center, Behind me, you see people milling into Battelle Hall, which will be the scene for the opening sessions of the Constituting Convention for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. The purpose of the Constituting Convention is to ratify certain documents without the freedom of changing them. These documents include the Constitution and the bylaws and the continuing resolutions and the pension plan as approved by the three predecessor bodies at their 1986 conventions. The business of the convention requires delegates to be familiar with many volumes of material. They ratify a constitution for the new church and they adopt a budget of more than $112 million. You will have noticed that the fiscal proposals for 1988 are not balanced. We recognized, however, though, that because of the flexible nature and the need for fiscal flexibility during this time of transition, that it would be better to leave an open budget with the recognition that the final budget for the ELCA will be determined toward the end of 1987 by the Church Council as it establishes an expenditure authorization for 1988 in the light of more up-to-date information. They also ratify a pension plan for the new church. The delegates also are taking action on membership in the Lutheran World Federation, the National Council of Churches of Christ in the USA, the World Council of Churches, and other ecumenical organizations. A letter went to the 103 member churches of the Lutheran World Federation uh, about this constituting convention. Now, we have received 
a number of greetings, I am going to read you just a few excerpts from some of the letters that have been received. First of all, from uh, the President, the Reverend Francisco Choke of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bolivia. Just a short section. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lutheran Church in Bolivia congratulates the historic step the churches take to form the new church in partnership. As you celebrate the birth of your new structure, and as we mark the 140th birthday of our own, we in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod are bold to issue Dr. Walther's invitation to you on this day. Let us continue to pursue unity in faith and confession in order to promote and advance the efforts toward the final establishment of what Dr. Walther called one single evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Two years ago, we had our constituting convention, and those of us who were present at that convention know something of that which is happening for you this day. But one thing that we have learned in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada that uh, through a heap of living together, it soon becomes our home and we become comfortable in this new church. We also had opportunity to speak to the bishops of the three merging churches. What are the unique contributions which the ALC will bring to the new church? I would say the chief one is, uh, is biblical faithfulness. Add on to it the word confessional. Biblical and confessional faithfulness. There's a solidity to the people of the American Lutheran Church with respect to the core of the faith as described in the Lutheran Confessions. They understand that to be a biblical item, and when you get away from that, then a second thing that I would say is a great ability to, uh, to adjust, to move, to accommodate to one's partners. Uh, we are, of course, uh, a church that was exiled uh, from the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and our intentions when we formed this church uh, was to uh, realize the uh, moments that we are experiencing here now in the ELTA. Uh, so that part of the history of our church, the history of our oppression, uh, and also the history of our strong uh, commitment to uh, the Holy Scriptures and a disciplined study of the same are the kinds of contributions that we will be making to the ELCA. Uh, we have learned to live with and exult in the kind of diversity uh, that now the, the, uh, the ELCA is very intentional about expressing and making sure that it is included. So, so that's definitely one of the gifts that we bring. And there was this expression in our Constitution, which got into the Constitution of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, that it is the congregation that finds its expression and fulfillment in the Universal Church and vice versa. The universal church finds its expression and fulfillment in the congregation. Uh, that's, that's very definite in our tradition, and I think it's uh, uh, certainly a contribution. Then we would have to, to speak of the ecumenical contribution. That also has been at the very heart of the LCA's understanding of what it is to be Lutheran. The elections require a great deal of attention from the delegates. They're selecting members of boards and commissions from a list of more than 500 nominees. Board for Congregational Life. Ticket one, Albu, Joseph, 461, Foss, Michael, 479. Ticket two, elected on a previous ballot. Ticket three, Brunkow, David, 643, Huglin, Mark, 280. Ticket four, Durant. On the ninth ballot, after two days of voting, the delegates elect the first bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. The results of the, the ninth ballot are Herbert Schilstrom, 626 votes. Herbert Schilstrom, 626 votes. David Preuss, 411. David Preuss, 411. We sometimes compare the church to a ship, and I think that's appropriate in many ways. Over the past several years, the CNLC has been building a ship for us, and they've been helped by hundreds and hundreds of other people. And now, recently, the transition team, 
I think it's a good ship. We're going to have to repair it periodically, but I think it's basically a very, very fine ship. And now you've elected me as your captain to go on board to begin preparing it. And in a few moments, you're going to elect other very important people. And then in the weeks and months to come, still others are going to be chosen to board the ship and get it ready for the journey that's ahead of us. My hope and my prayer is that people will enter that ship with confidence. I will promise this, that I will do my very, very best to respect the traditions that flow into this church. But I will also bend every effort to be the bishop of the whole church and to hasten the day when we will be able to say, hopefully very soon, that we really do feel that we are one family of God. Your own personal history is a kind of bridge as well. The Augustana tradition, a bridge tradition between the ALC and the, ALC and the LCA and its many years of history, also comes into play. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I have uh, deep roots in Minnesota, but I've had the opportunity to serve in other parts of the country. And uh, I've had a chance to look at the church in many different dimensions. Uh, I think uh, because of that, uh, I can go to any part of the country and feel very comfortable in uh, the new Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. You're a bishop of an LCA synod. Uh, your wife is a pastor of an ALC congregation. Uh, the new church has taken care of your mixed marriage, so to speak, but it's also created another situation now with regard to what she will do. Well, that's right. We don't know what the future holds in store for her. She's had a very uh, wonderful experience in ministry at an ALC congregation in Minneapolis. Uh, she'll resign that now as we move to Chicago. And uh, because of our commitment to the new Lutheran Church, it's really quite uncertain what the future holds in store for her. But as I said to the delegation yesterday, uh, I've discovered in our journey in life together that she has a way of of uh, finding out where she can make a contribution, and it's always been a good one. The secretary of the church is elected on the fifth ballot. Allman Lowell, 558. Jensen Harold, 435. Lowell Allman is elected secretary. We are bringing together now our histories and our hopes we are standing at a point that many of our forebears long to see. They dreamed of this day. They prayed for this day. They worked for this day. And we inherit from them the privilege of living through this day. So now we join hands as sisters and brothers in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And we walk across the river from our former churches. We walk across the river into the bright new day that we can enjoy together in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Laura, we've been friends for many years. We've worked together on the church's magazines. We've been a kind of team. Now you're venturing into a new team as part of the leadership of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. How do you view those new responsibilities? I know that Bishop Chilstrom and I are mutually committed to the confessional heritage of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. I believe we're also sensitive to some of the concerns and tensions that, that are being faced in, in the church in the, in the coming years. We're also committed to the church's um, efforts in outreach in the years ahead. Uh, the vision, the dreams, the, the goals that have been built into the structure of the Evangelical Lutheran Church are ones that, uh, that we will treasure in carrying out our duties and uh, seek to uh, ensure that they are implemented in ways appropriate for the church. The office of vice president is designated as a lay position. There were seven nominees, four of them women. Having received the requisite vote, the vice president is Christine Grum. We are at a time 
when the ELCA is involved with a variety of different people, a variety of different issues in our society, and the world that we are relating to has many conversations going on. And so, brothers and sisters, as you go back to your congregations, go back to your constituting conventions of your synods, I hope that you will take the opportunity to seize the moment so that the gospel of the Lord can be heard throughout the land. Your chief responsibility will be chairing the church council. How do you view that role? Well, I, I think there are a lot of different things that will happen within that role, but primarily I think the initial responsibility will be to pull that group together to develop some sense of community. There are going to be people from varying disciplines in terms of what they've been used to in terms of organizational structure, and it seems to me that one of the first tasks is get people comfortable with each other, begin to develop a trust level, and at the same time, while we're building that community, deal with the issue of inclusiveness, because not only are we talking about different organizational structures, structures, but we're talking about a whole new mix of people together. The convention also ratifies my nomination as editor of the Lutheran, the magazine of the church. That vote count for the Lutheran, yes, is 8-3-1, yes is 8-3-1, no is 1-1-2, no is 1-1-2. One, one, one of the earliest visible symbols that will come into your homes of the new church is its magazine. And its chief purpose in those days will be to bond us together. We've been cousins, we've been nieces, we've been nephews, we're now brothers and sisters, and part of the role of the magazine will bring us to that realization and to bond us and unify us together. A church convention is many things, but it is chiefly an assembly of God's people. As such, God's people spend a portion of each day in worship.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Each one of us and all of us together will again be receiving the commission to be stewards of the mystery of Christ. And from Peter, the martyr, we hear the affirmation of our calling. You are the chosen race, the king's priests, the holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God who called you out of darkness into his own marvelous light. And that is where we are today. In this day of renewal for the Lutheran churches in America and for the churches worldwide, it is a day of grace, of love, of commitment, a day of joy. It is a first day of a future in his own marvelous light. Amen. Do this for the remembrance of me. That God can make us one with those with whom we will never merge. But this coming together is a sign. It is a witness. It is an earthly sacrament, one incarnation of God's eternal longing that all believers may be one. And so we give thanks and we pray with Jesus. O oh God, may we see that our unity is in you and in nothing less, not in our histories or traditions, not in ethnic background or in years of membership, not in church high or low. It is in you, O oh God. This is a historic convention where a number of important decisions are being made. Some of the delegates took a moment to share their thoughts with us. My name is Alberto Rodriguez, Omaha, Nebraska. I'm real excited about being here, that I was given the opportunity to be a delegate to this great historical convention. Okay? I'm excited about everything that's happening here. I'm beginning to hear the language that I've been wanting to hear for a long time. 10% representation, people of color, Hispanic ministries, Asian ministries. I'm Darrell Rood. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota. It's one of the more exciting things I think I've done in my life. It's uh, a sense of history, a sense of a new beginning. Uh, I think the experience here and the depth of commitment is just outstanding. I'm Donna Wright from Santa Monica, California. I'm very excited about the election of the bishop and the other officers. My name is Patty Green from uh, Altoona, PA. I've been uh, here for three days. I'm finding it very interesting since this is the very first time I've ever been to a national convention. In fact, it's the first time I've ever been to a convention uh, for the Lutheran Church. So it's, the whole thing is, is a bit overwhelming at some times, but I'm finding uh, an awful lot of information. My name is Peter Lai. I'm from California. It's very, very exciting here because everybody get together in a, and this a unification of the church, the three church, is making me exciting. I'm Don Jones. Uh, I'm, I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I'm a former member of AELC. I look in, in anticipation of going into a new church. I understand the, the rigors. I understand that we we as three church bodies must finally die in order to resurrect again into a new church. And I look forward to that with great enthusiasm. The ELCA could not have come into existence without the hard work of a large number of people. Have you ever thought about building a house? The commission for the new Lutheran church 
really designed the new house and home for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. The task of the transition team was to take that design as a new home and to begin to put in place the various systems that are needed so that the new church could begin to function January 1, 1988. The Commission for a New Lutheran Church was charged with the responsibility to make all the recommendations necessary to bring a new church into being. They worked hard for just about four years to do that and have brought to the church all the recommendations that enable this constituting convention to bring the Evangelical Lutheran Church into being. Four days in Columbus are coming to a close. They've been good days. The delegates arrived in high spirit and great enthusiasm. They went about their work very deliberately. They worked hard, they worked intensely, and they were weary at night when the sessions were over. But they left with smiles on their faces knowing that they had created the fourth largest Protestant church in the United States. In doing so, they blazed some trails for all of us to follow. For one thing, they learned to come together as the new family of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. The delegates were seated alphabetically. They learned to know each other in a very personal way. And then they made sure that they elected leaders that represented the rich traditions from the merging churches. But above all, they thrilled to two specific symbols of our coming together. The first came during the opening worship service when the bishops of the three churches came together with containers of water and emptied them into a common font, symbolizing what we all knew, namely that we are one in Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And then at the closing communion service, as if to punctuate all of the oneness that had been there, the three bishops with their three decanters of wine pouring them into the common chalice, which then the new bishop elevated to the crowd of 3,000 people, saying, we raise ourselves up as the offering we are to God as the new evangelical Lutheran church in America. And so we have come together, sort of forever intermingling our common streams, but also reminding ourselves that we have come together for a very specific purpose out of a common Lord and for a common witness in the unity of the Spirit. Do you have a word for the 11,000 congregations of the new Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? Well, yes, I certainly do, Ed. Uh, the process that we've been through in this convention, the election, was a rather long and arduous one. I found at the end, however, that uh, there was a profound sense of unity that swept through the delegation. It was a time when we gave thanks to God for the ministry of people like Bishop Hertzfeld and Bishop Crumley and Bishop Preuss, and a time when the delegates could say that this is a new day that has arrived. And uh, I invite all of you in the church to join the delegates here at this convention in saying yes to the future of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Come share the